this video I would like to talk a little bit more about masculine um, purity. So to understand a little bit the need for masculine purity, it's also under necessary to understand their roots a bit. Um, human society moved from a, being a matriarchal society to a patriarchal society, which meant that the masculine aspect had to yeah, give direction and accelerate the development of consciousness on this planet. And to do so, they all these religions developed methods because they realized that in a way the unpure masculine uh, was a danger, was a threat, and um, rather than a support for the development. I want to use as example the myth of the Sun King in the uh, Celtic tradition. The tribe would be led by uh, a male who would be named the Sun King. And the Sun King would devote both his life and his death to achieving his goal. Ultimately, he was born, as every man is, to perform a certain function, to fulfill their goal upon this planet. Why else are we here if not to fulfill our task? For some people that task is a relatively simple task or even a personal task. Some people are here just to experience something, to pay their debt maybe, or um, to work on themselves. But for other people the task is larger and impacts society. Uh, and other people around them. And for those people um, who in a way do not limit their actions to their own lives but have actions which influence the lives of others, it is necessary to attain purity. Otherwise their actions uh, will actually have an opposite or negative effect. So to attain this a person would be chosen so the kingship was not so much inherited, but it is chosen. So the elders would decide uh, what is necessary for the people and whose task would fit that necessary transformation. So perhaps the tribe needed to move to a new area or they would need to create a, a temple or a village or develop um, a fishing fleet or whatever that goal is, um, the elders would find the person whose task would match the needs of the tribe. And this person would then be given the authority to lead the tribe. But before doing so, they would have to pass through a ritual. And this is the ritual of the old god and the young god. One of the problems in society is that uh, the masculine has forgotten the tradition of the old god and they serve very different purposes. So the young god is basically the one who carries the idea, who has the fire, who says look at me, look at what I want to achieve, uh, follow me, see my light, see my vision. Um, so they're in a way the guider, the one who brings the fire of renewal and um, lights uh, the spark, lights the way. But this is only possible in a pure way by first going through the old god. And the old god is the one who is willing to die, who is willing to sacrifice, who is willing to do everything, give up everything for others or for his goal, or for his mission. He represents the death of everything you are, everything you have, of your ego. And the old God is all about the sacrifice, the purification, the using yourself to give others uh, the stability, the peace, the security. 
so that they can fulfill their tasks. Because if you do not make it possible for others to fulfill their tasks, how can you fulfill your task? If not, if others are unable to support you. So this is very much the old God ritual, which you would have to first go into. You would first have to see what others need from you, what they would take from you. And you have to let go of it all, give it willingly. Let go of your time, your energy, your attention, your body, your very existence. And only by being willing and in a way, in a mystical ritual, giving up everything which you have, which you could ever have, which you have attained, then will you be ready to be reborn as the young God in a pure way. Because then there is nothing in you to corrupt your mission. Because everything you have has been repurposed to serve your mission and to serve the others who may or may not support you in your mission. There is no more self, there is only the mission. And this is masculine purity. And we see this ritual coming back in lots of other cultures in different ways. In shamanism, they, before a person, a man, is allowed to become a part of the tribe and to sit in on meetings and decide the fate of the tribe. They are buried alive they have, and have to undergo also a ritual death so that they can be purified and that their decision and their um, actions and words are not clouded by their ego, by their selfishness, by their fears, their fear of death, fear of loss. The same even holds true for Jesus Christ who also passed through death to ultimately become a guiding light. This is a process which is not unique to shamanism or the Celtic tradition or the Christian tradition. It is true of all spiritual growth. The masculine has to purify itself for it to be able to progress. And in a way the vows people make, and these can be relatively pacifist vows, by going into a monastery and, in a way, letting go of all your wealth, of all your status, of all your position, of your family, giving up all the ties that bind you and that hold you back from your purpose or could, in a way, pollute that very purpose. So a monastic life is one way to go into purity. The other way is in a way sacrifice, to go on a quest, on a mission where you're willing also to risk life and limb, wealth, everything, and sacrifice it to that goal. So in a way there is no real difference, spiritually speaking, between a reborn Christian, a person who went through shamanic death through the Celtic old god ritual or who lives in a monastery or goes on spiritual quests. All these are methods of purifying the masculine impulse so that the masculine impulse can do what it is supposed to do. We're all born with this mission. Every and each one of us also women have this masculine impulse, but in men it tends to be a larger part of their consciousness, and therefore also a bigger drive which is harder to ignore. And the lack of purification is usually the cause of great tragedy. If we look at all these idealists who wanted to change the world for the better, create a brotherhood between men, how often these end up in dictatorships, into cronyism, into corruption, 
favoring family members, favoring friends. And all this is not because their dream is flawed, but because the men who are chasing that dream, who are fighting to achieve it, have not purified themselves enough. And therefore they carry the seeds of the downfall of the very thing they create with them. So in my first video, also I gave the example of a person being in love with a woman. So regardless of the strength of that love, if I have not purified myself, my own impurities will ultimately harm not only the relationship, but also the very person I love, because I will inflict all my impurities upon whatever uh, I come in contact with. So if you have not attained purity, do not act in full force, because forcing things in a way generates a stronger effect, but both your light is enforced, but also your darkness is enlarged. And for the masculine, the darkness will always be larger than the light. So even when we do go through a purification ritual, there is still a big danger that unseen parts of ourselves, unseen impurities, will destroy everything we, we achieve. So for the stability of our work as men, Purity is an essential. Purity is necessary. That doesn't mean that we cannot do anything because we are imperfect. Because the tasks we are given, the authority we are given, the position we are given matches our ability. So as long as we do what we are capable of, we do our best, we will achieve what we must. And the greater man can achieve what we can't achieve, and we have to accept that. In the next video will speak about the relationship between purity and the feminine.